Bri wax, B R I W A X, and it's four aught steel wool, four zeros. And, uh, I know Woodcraft used to carry it, and uh, I, I used to buy it from the devil, Amazon. <laughs> uh, and you prefer it over uh, like the hardware store because the oil is. Because it's so fine. It, here, I want you to touch it. Just, I'll pass this around. If we run out of toilet paper, we can use that. <laughs> I mean, I literally can uh, almost polish out a fender. Well, you saw what I did that night. I mean, the saddle. I gave it this semi-gloss look to it. All right, so let's see here. We'll see how my frets are going in. I measure 45 on this, 45, well, maybe 46. It's hovering right around 45, 46. This is supposed to be 45 tall wire. 45. Good. And those aren't glued in. And that and, and they're in there so good that you wouldn't have to. You got a little gap underneath them. The uh, next one they're gonna put in with fish glue, but for kicks we're just gonna see where our next city is. Is that what you, you glue with, with fish glue? I am on this. I'm going to do some CA work on it too. Uh, is this why you did these particular tracks first? So you could check your... Yeah, room? I wanted to see, what, see if I'm changing. You know. <coughs> so, I'm still dead flat. So we haven't changed yet. And I'm fine with that. You know. At least I know what's going on. Nothing's changing. I suspect we'll change a little bit. I mean, maybe we're not changing because we've got a, a massive piece of uh, wood there underneath. You know, I haven't carved this yet. So I'm just going to take a bead of fish glue and uh, make sure I've got my claws. I'm going to put my claw over there. I'm bead in there, squeegee it off. Is fish glue clear with water? Yes, water. this is water soluble. But no need to heat it. No need to heat it, you don't have to heat it. That's why people are using it instead of pipe. Yeah, yeah, that's why it's so it's so convenient. You don't have to heat it and you got plenty of uh, glue time. Like I can sit here and fumble around, it doesn't matter. Um, now I'm gonna put it in with that. When it comes time to pull that fret, do you want to heat it up to loosen that glue up? Or? Yeah, uh, it wouldn't hurt. You didn't glue in the first What'd you say? You didn't glue in the first three, correct? I didn't glue in the first three, but in a minute I'm going to glue them in. Okay. I'm going to glue them in while they're on the board, and I'll show you how I'll do that. Okay. So you'll remember. Two, I mean, uh, one, five, and twelve. I don't have glue in, but I want frets on each either side of them before I glue them in, and you'll you'll see why in just a minute. Having a fret on the opposite side of each one, I won't be able to do it on, because that's the first. But I'll be able to get one side. Gives me uh, something to scrape off of. It doesn't make any sense until you see me do it. I'm just kind of wipe this up. Now, the only drawback of this is I'm, I'm introducing water into, onto the neck. Yeah. Raise the grain. Raise the grain. I'm just going to raise the grain. That's good because I didn't sand very good. You know, I did a horrible job sanding the fingerboard. But I took it up to 120 and I did a poor job with the 120. Just kind of skirted my way through. Um, is that what the razor blade does later on? Here? Yeah, yeah. Um, so, I'm just cleaning off the excess glue. 
All right. What do y'all want to do next? Nine. Which uh, fret? Nine. We'll do nine. Good. That sounds like a good one. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Do you generally move in a particular pattern? Uh, I just kind of come work my way in. Now this next time I might just go straight beside my fifth. And I'm just seeing how it, it, it compresses out, if any. And I may not do anything about it. If it compresses it out, I might decide, hey, you know, but I'll try to take a mental note. You know, for just just future reference. Thanks. You can use type on. There's no difference in the, the application. You're just going to squeeze it into the slot. I can use type on if I wanted to. I prefer fish glue because it's water, water soluble. But um, Now here's another good thing that this is doing when you use a glue like this. It's filling at the bottom of that slot and all around it and it's also starting to ooze out the side of my neck. You can see this right here. Um, if I just decided to leave that and go on about my business and wait until tomorrow to clip the fret ends, then uh, in a lot of cases we may get lucky and it just fills everything in on the side. So you, have this nice flush part. But what I'm gonna do is show you how to, on the ones that I'm gluing with CA, how I would uh, attempt to uh, fill the end, ends of the frets. And I like bound boards, fretting them. I used to hate it. But fretting a bound board, I never charge any extra money for them because they're not any extra work. I mean, if you're going to do a fret job where when I do an unbound board, I drop fill all the way down every fret into those slots that are exposed. And then you have a finish that you got to deal with. So I'm drop filling each one of those, leveling, polishing, and then if I need to French polish or, or do lacquer touch up on the side when we burn through our lacquer, I do that. So in most cases, a board that doesn't have binding takes me longer than a board that has binding. I'm going to go to that point doing it. <coughs> on a new build, do you bind before you fret or after? Now here's how I always did it. I always would take the fingerboard and I would cut my fingerboard and subtract how thick my, thick my binding was going to be and then bind the whole fingerboard and then glue the fingerboard on binding and all. And that's how I always done it. I'm, I'm sure you could bind it, it afterwards by using a router. It just always made sense for me to, to use the fingerboard. Yeah, but as far as fretting, did you put your frets in? Oh, I would put my frets in after I, I, I put my binding on. Okay. But that, now, unless you're going to do a Gibson style with the tabs, you're going to need to fret it, put your binding on, and then cut. You know how they have the plastic nibs on the, on the side of some Gibsons mm -hmm. with binding? You would cut. Then you cut, you know, your binding comes up on the sides, mm -hmm. and then you cut down in between the binding down. So each fret is capped with a little piece of plastic. Do you have to do that though? Can you put, can you like cut off part of the tank and then put it over the binding where the nibs would be? Yeah, you can take, when you refret one, you take the nibs off. Okay. Most people want that because then you have a fret that goes all the way into the board. And some people want to save it, the, the little nibs. And they always want to say, well, they, you know, they like to save it until you tell them how much it's going to cost and they're wrapped with it. Because you go, I mean, it is, I've done partials where I've saved those nibs, it didn't touch them, but that partial refret took me a really, really long time. So, I'm still here right at, right around zero. That's good. So we're not changing much with this. Prep job. We don't get much compression so far. Did you say you normally put frets in before the back's carved, or you carve the back first? I usually carve the back first. This is the first time. 
I've ever done this. So I'm learning right here with you. So we're gonna speed up this so we can move along on. A little more dramatic with it. So I got plenty of time with this glue. I couldn't do this if this was high glue. Uh, this would be a, a situation. Since you have fish glue, is there any reason for you to use high glue? Yeah, I trust high glue. And I trust fish glue so far because it hasn't let me down. But I've only been using fish glue for maybe three years, two years. So it, it makes me a little nervous so the, sometimes. The braces haven't come loose where you use fish glue? Not so far. I don't know that for a fact because, I mean, let's say I glued it in someone's brace and they'd be like, oh, this thing came loose. And then they were mad at me and never came back. I mean, yeah. that's a possibility. You know? yeah. Or, you know, those guys down there at that shop, they're idiots, they don't know what they're doing. It's always a possibility. That's my fear. Like if you know, I'd like to hear some feedback if something doesn't come yeah. right. It's, one, I would like to make it right. Two, you know, I would also like to know so I don't keep making the same mistake over and over. Right. So far, all the stuff that I've experienced, experimented with, it's uh, it's been fine. Is fishing get hard to crystallize like? Yeah, it reminds me a lot of uh, high glue. Almost identical except for the scent. I'm still on nine and a half, you don't want me to forget that. I'm gonna go back on the 12s. <clears throat> If you're doing a brace repair on a high glue build, would you prefer to stick with high glue or would you consider fish glue? If I'm doing a, if I'm, uh, let's say I'm doing a vintage uh, Martin or Gibson and I can get to that brace fast and get it clamped up quick, I'm gonna, I'm gonna use high glue. I'm gonna use high glue if I'm, uh, if I'm gluing a bridge on a vintage Martin. Uh, or Gibson or, or any other make that would, would be that way because unless it was a tricky glue situation <clears throat> and uh, and I knew I wasn't going to have enough time. And so I would rather use the fish glue versus doing a poor job to using high glue. Is this your 12 now? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I've switched to my 12 now. I was on my nine and a half. Now I'm just going to kind of go check my centers. I can tell all the nine and a half really put it on in there. I'm doing this because when y'all were at lunch or when I came back, I tapped. 
my first, fifth, and twelfth, and I notice I can get the center of it to go down just a little bit more. All right, I'm gonna wipe all this glue off. Then I'm gonna glue those in with the CA. Uh -uh. <clears throat> Thank you. Oh, that in. We could have run the glue all over. You can, uh, yeah, I don't know, but I know that with this glue boost, there's guys that are showing you how to do finishes with it. You know, by rubbing on the finish and. Looks real glassy, doesn't it? And that what it gives? Yeah. Flex seal. All right, we'll let this start to dry. Okay, so. I'm going to glue a fret in. I'm going to use, uh, let me start. we're going to have 10 CA. This stuff I get at the hobby shop, you know, like uh, the home of Toy Hobby is where I buy this because it's right next to the shop. Our accelerator. Let me clean up a little bit. While that dries. Still gonna need this. Anyway. <clears throat> oh, look at that. What time is it? I want to make sure we get to this table too, because I want to do that. One, so, one o'clock. One o'clock. We're here on that. All right, we still have some time. We still got a nut. I want to see. I want you to watch me slide. Yeah. At what point will you blow in one five? That's what I'm doing. But I just see how the fingerboard's wet. Um, I cleaned all that glue. I'm just cleaning up while it kind of flashes off that water. I thought you knew the rest of the press and CA. I was like, can you use do it flat? glue after it's inserted, or is that only product? Uh, I don't think I can wick it underneath the uh, fret that way. I mean, it may be, maybe if you watered it down, I don't know how well it would work. Um, and maybe, maybe if you have enough of a gap underneath the fret, maybe you could get it in a syringe and then inject it that way. But I would say probably yes if it's a certain situation. And, uh, the most does likely the suction cup work on the fret the same way that the, you know, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, when you try to get into a crack. Yeah. I don't know, I've never tried it. That's a good thing, I maybe mean, it would. You never know. All right, so I'm going to want razor blades. And I want a Q-tip. I want some naphtha. seated really nice. I like it. Is it going to lay flat like that when you do it? Is it going to lay flat or are you going to turn it up? No, I'm going to leave it flat. Actually, I'm to, if we want to do it, we want to put it in the vise. Will NAPTA dissolve CA glue? What? NAPTA dissolve CA glue? Um, I don't know, it's not going to dissolve CA glue, but while it's wet, it tends to take it off better than like a you know, like a water soap, you know, rag or just a paper towel. Paper towel is instantly, um, I guess since it's kind of petroleum based, I don't use it all the time, but. All right, so I got Johnson's Paste Wax. I'm gonna get it on my Q-tip. And I don't want tons of it on the board because I really don't want to build up a Johnson, a, a wax like dam in front of the fret because it, it's not gonna wick, the wax is gonna stop it. 
but I'm trying to keep it off the board and I don't really care if I get it on the board. Honestly, I don't have to use the wax because it's a new build and I'm gonna be doing a lot of uh, scraping on the board. Um, but this is like if I was gonna be doing this on, on another guitar. Put my wax on that board. Sometimes I only go in one side, and sometimes I go in both sides. But I'm gonna wax both sides in case I feel I'm not getting. Sometimes I'm disappointed because I, I don't feel like I get it really wicked in there. And as long as the fret's holding, I don't worry too much. Then I'm gonna take my. Uh, A good thing to do is take a paper towel roll. A lot of the times I do this in the shot, I walk over to the bandsaw and I cut it in half. You know, and then it's really good if you've already got the selected size. I figured that out one day when I'm, I came back from the grocery store. My wife goes, "Why didn't you get the select size?" And she was yelling at me. So this went downstairs. Went, <laughs> put, put them both on the roll right next to each other in the kitchen. Like, There's your select size. <laughs> <laughs> She's roll her eyes. <laughs> so I'm going to get my naphtha on the uh, rag. I'm going to make sure that my uh, CA here is working. And I'm just going to run it down the side of that fret. And so I'm not getting much wicking action going on. Yeah, I've got such a tight fit to that that board. Yeah, that side's starting to whip through. And then generally it'll whip underneath your fret. And that one did some. Then I'm gonna clean off the excess. Because it's thin, it sticks down there. Yeah, and the uh, newer your CA is, the better it's gonna work. The more it sits in a shop around your house. So if you don't use it a lot, get the smallest bottle you can. Um, this has been sitting around already about a month. So if I bought this this morning just opened up, it may wick even better. I'm not too worried about it. I'm just trying to show you the process. Uh, and the paste wax that you put on helps prevent it from absorbing into the rosary? It just makes your life easier when you get your chisel out. It typically will come off the board easier. And like I said, I haven't done a whole lot of I'm wax this one from the side. Is that just regular old paste wax? Yeah, Johnson's paste wax is what I'm using. So maybe we'll try it on our board a little bit and we'll see how that works. I'm coming up one side. Works out good as far as seeding these frets because it doesn't want to go underneath that. All right, so let's do the first fret with no wax. We'll see what it's like. Soaking up the excess. Gluing it to Yeah. I didn't have naphtha on there, that's why. <laughs> that's why I use naphtha. All right, so now we got the glue all over there. And we want to get the glue off of it. <clears throat> on a sharp chisel. I don't have much glue on there because I kind of wiped it off. Um, I like my chisel, this chisel. And so, I'm gonna go through here. And so that wax is coming up and any kind of CA residues on there too. I'm trying not to take any wood off. Is it inevitable for you to take a little wood off or can you get by without it? I've gotten by without it and I've made the mistake of taking wood off. There. I don't like it when it happens. 
what's his name? You know, we would paint and he'd say, happy little mistakes. Oh, oh, right. oh, yeah, these are sad mistakes. <laughs> So it was much easier to get the, the glue off of that side than it is this side that I didn't use the paste wax. See the difference? Yeah. See, I'm almost getting into wood at this point. I did a little bit right there. I just went to this side. All right, so then I'm going to take my razor blade, and I'm going to, that's the one I glued in, I'm going to scrape, and when I don't have a fret on the other side, it just makes it harder, because I'm, I fall into a, a hole or it's on the end of the board, and I don't have a good stopping point, and then I'll end up having to stop the razor blade, and I'll get these little lines in there from where I stop. But see if I've got a fret on the other side, I get to go straight from fret to fret. And a lot of violin makers, you know, they, they never use sandpaper. They use scraper blades to, to smooth out wood. So you can get a really nice finish by, with a razor blade. So. So I'm going to scrape that, I'm scraping all the wood off, I mean all the glue off of that line. And so I'm going to do two, I'm going to, this one doesn't need it, get any glue off, but I'm going to scrape it just to, to do it so I can hit that, still pull it off, and we'll see what kind of finish we have on that wood without having to, if you've ever gone to a, uh, more over 120. We just saved a bunch of time if we like the way it looks. Which I suspect we will. I went against the grain because I'm just trying to polish up. Now I'm kind of going with the grain. But I usually don't have any kind of issues with this. I'm just skipping ahead so you don't have to watch this whole job. Big difference. In yeah, I can see it right from here. I can see oh, you it. can really feel it, though. You yeah, you can see it, the diff amazing. whole different sheen. I don't know if y'all can tell the difference in these these two frets. I mean, the fingerboard in between versus the rest of it. And uh, I'm gonna put a little oil on that. And then we'll just pass this on around. Okay, I use a. Uh, I use butcher block oil, mineral oil. Limb oil is, I think, from my understanding, is mineral oil with uh, additives to it, which is fine. I've had people tell me that, oh, they love coconut oil, and you all they have to think coconut oil goes rancid, you know, so I don't use it. Um, so just butcher block mineral oil, you know, it's food grade. We, we use it for butcher blocks. Put food on it. I think it's fine to use on uh, fingerboards. And so I didn't do a whole bunch of, uh, have to do a whole bunch of uh, sanding on the board. And, and uh, we'll pass this around so you can feel what it feels like between there with that little bit of scraping. And, uh, and that scraping sanded my board basically. Got all the glue off the, uh, of it. And because uh, it scraped it right off. And then a little still wool and then straight to my uh, oil. So your oil is going to be your final finish for the board? Yeah, for that, I think I would start, start with that. Yeah, I really probably wouldn't put anything else on it since it's rosewood. Now, we're going to pass around the 
on that, we can go ahead and pull out a tailor and we're going to do some uh, yeah. partial refret. Uh, the binding and get those frets in there so we can do some. Uh, 